hello. Welcome everybody. So if you've painted with me before, you'll know that I'm now in my bedroom studio rather than the um, my kitchen. Though if you didn't know it was a kitchen, um, that's what it was. I just had a backdrop. So hello. Um, I see people from Iowa and Indiana and Florida. Hello. Yeah, so you're early, but that's okay. I'm just going to get ready. I'm just getting ready um, to paint with you all. So, and chatting. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. I'm here. And uh, I'm just going to get ready to paint. So it's been like raining and hailing almost all day today. So if you hear wind and rain, <laughs> loud noises from outside, um, that's what that is. Let's get my paint. My hands are kind of cold. <laughs> Um, I've only done a few paintings, so this will be interesting. Well, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you get to paint with us tonight. So I have, just so you know, I have like my camera, um, here, and then I have my, um, my comments over here. So if I'm looking over here, it's because I'm reading your comments because I can't really see them on my screen. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, if you're if you're watching the replay, so um, all my all my live classes will go on my YouTube, um, and they will remain there forever. Um, so if you're watching the live replay, I will put a timestamp in the description. So if you want to skip the live chat um, and just get straight to the start of class, um, you can just click you know whatever number that is, and it'll take you to when we start class. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be painting with you all. I'm trying to figure out whether or not to use my dark pink or my light pink. I think I'll just lighten it up with white. Um, but I think palette knife painting is one of my favorite things to do now. <laughs> so, um, I'd, I, I think I hadn't really done palette knife painting, um, before... Probably, I want to say October. Um, I feel like before that, it was just like, you know, little here, little there. And I didn't really fully understand it, but I love it now um, for mountains, for flowers, for adding textures, for just all the things. Um, but yeah. Hello from all over. I have a lot of Canadians here. I don't know how that happened. Because I'm in San Diego. And we always have a lot of Canadians here. Alright. I don't know how... I don't think my chat is updating as much as I would like it to. Because I, I didn't see... Anyways, I'll figure it out. But... Yeah. Um, let me know if you've ever tried palette knife painting before. Um, I think when I first started, I was like afraid of it. And it took me a few times of painting before like I could fully let go and just let the palette knife do what it wanted to do. Um, there was definitely a time when I was just, I wasn't letting go and I didn't. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really like the way that they were coming out, but then once I let go and I let it do whatever it wanted to do, it was, it came out really good. So I think the owl was the first one that I did that I really just had to let go because it, it, it wasn't turning out the way I wanted it to. And I was just like, just let go. So part of it is really just trust the process um, for all of this. Hello from Minnesota, from Indiana, Canada, New York. South Dakota, Washington, 
that Pennsylvania? Um, only use palette knife for straight lines. Well, you will learn a few more techniques in this one because we're going to be using it for like texture. So there's, um, there will be a part of the background wall that we're going to add texture to. And then we're also going to use, um, a palette knife for the flower petals. So, um, if you're a patron of mine, you'll know, um, with my quick tip that I put out on Tuesday, I kind of went over what we're going to be doing, um, to give you guys some practice. But, um, if you're not a patron, then, um, you won't know until we actually get to it, but it's a pretty simple process. Um, something with palette knife painting is you have to just like do it and then be okay with it and just trust that as you keep moving you'll start seeing things differently and like um I remember when I was doing the I did a patreon class I don't know it's like two months ago it had um, mountains and stuff and when you're when you're starting out doing it you're like this looks weird what am I doing and then after you do a couple strokes it's like whoa there's a mountain like it's crazy um uh, is this using acrylics or oil we are going to be using acrylics um you can use oils but the drying time is completely different and you might have there's just a different process you use a lot less paint in the background so that it can it, there's just a different process so um if you're acquainted with oils and you want to you know paint with oils that is totally fine and that's up to you um, but I'm going to be painting with acrylics. And yeah, for anyone who's not done um, palette knife painting, this isn't a true palette knife painting. Palette knife paintings, you have, you do like the whole painting with just a palette, type, palette knife. There's, there's, there's no brushes. Um, but I like to do... I look to I like to do a little bit of both um, especially for beginners who aren't really used to doing palette knife paintings it's it's a very scary thing when you're not used to it so um, adding it in little bits and for textures and things like that I find then you can fall in love with palette knife painting and then you know get better at it um, yeah, you only have acrylics great <laughs> um, I love the Olaf painting. Oh, this one? Yeah. We did that in a... I did that in a in-person class at the Brew Coffee Spot. Um, so I live in San Diego and in La Mesa, which is like a... In the, in the county of San Diego, there's like little towns. Um, right next to us is the city of La Mesa. And they have the Brew Coffee Spot. So it's just a local coffee shop. And before COVID, I used to do... Um... I used to do classes every other Monday, kind of like I do now, except now they're online. Um, but with COVID, you can't do that online. So, um, yeah, we did that at, I think it was last December. I think that was the snowman that I did. So every, every December I try to do, um, I try to do a snowman of some sort. So if you've joined me for the last month or so, um, we did a snowman, which you can still go see. Um, so if you want to go paint any of the classes, if I recommend a class or if I say anything about a past class, um, all of the classes that, um, I did that are mine and my content are on my YouTube. Um, so you did the, okay. So she, uh, life's a tease. Um, so she did the moonlit tree, Boston tree, which was, uh, two weeks ago. That was our last one. And yeah, there were so many people there. It was a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Hello. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, everyone. Yeah, so class is going to start in less than 15 minutes. So go ahead and grab all your um, your tools and your paintbrushes. Don't forget your water. A palette if you have one. Um, change your clothes because some of you will forget and then you'll get paint on you and then you'll be like, no, oh, my favorite shirt. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we're just talking about classes and things. 
Um, if you want to paint with me more than just the every other week, I do have on the off weeks I teach on my Patreon, which is just patreon.com slash Samantha Anderson Artist. And um, I teach exclusive classes for those who support me on there. A um, lot of fun. We have a close knit little community um, there. And that's a lot of fun. Um, and the classes are a little bit more tailored to who's there. So for the live classes, most of the time, I just kind of paint what I want. Um, or like paint what I think people will want to paint. Um, but typically for my Patreon, I get to be a little bit more um, specific to what they want to paint. Um, so I kind of tailor it a little bit. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. Um, and then I know people will ask because um, it is kind of a thing. But if you want to give a tip, I do have um, that information over on your left side. If you want to give a tip, it's totally not necessary. It's very optional. Um, these are free, but every every little tip does help. Um, just in buying new equipment and keeping keeping these free and everything. But uh, Mark, hello from Ontario. Hello, Nikki and Pat. Um, Pat, the colors that we are going to be needing. Um, so I can, I'll go over them again um, when we get closer to the actual class. Once we start class, I'll go over them. Um, but essentially what colors you see, there are um, your blue, your brown, your green, and your red for the background. Green you can um, just have yellow. You can mix your yellow and your blue if you want. Um, and then for the pot, we'll be doing our white and black for the pots with the other colors that we were, I already mentioned. And then purple. So I have a very dark purple. Um, it's very dark. It's called violet. Um, but you could use a, di a dioxide or anything else that's really dark. Um, cause honestly you can always lighten it up with white. Um, if you try to darken it with black, it kind of loses a little bit of its color. So if you have a lighter purple and you try and darken it, it can get grayed out versus having a dark color and whitening it up, which is, I think is why I'm going to use my darker pink instead of my lighter pink and trying to darken it up. And then, like I said, you can have green. If you don't want to use your green, you can just mix your yellow and your blue and have that. Cherry says, I'm going to paint later and watch now. You have lovely work. Thank you. Yeah, that's totally fine. You can watch now, get an idea for the process and what we're going to do, um, and then come back later and paint. Oh, Phyllis, you're not late. You're not late. We're just, we're just chatting, getting ready to paint. Hello from India. India, isn't it like the middle of the night for you? <laughs> Isn't so it like 3 a.m.? I mean, if it is and you want to paint, that's great. I just know a lot of people um, that far around the world tend to um, tend to watch the replay because it's it is really early in the morning, late at night, early in the morning. So we have about 10 minutes left before we get started. Um, what is everybody's favorite thing to paint like what's the what's the most favorite thing that you've painted thus far hello from Canada hi Jamie you're also from India is it am, am I wrong isn't it really early in the morning there maybe my time zones are off early in the morning okay well I appreciate you being on flowers well you are in the right spot to be painting flowers have you um have you ever painted flowers with a palette knife though my little baby is so sweet oh have you seen pictures of her uh, for those of you who don't know I have two kids I have a three-year-old son who's very rambunctious and super adorable 
and then I have a um, one and a half year old girl who if you've painted with me in December you know that she has a chondroplasia and so it just means that she's a little person and she's super adorable and chunky and I love her <clears throat> flowers and sea and beach I figured a lot of people <laughs> would be flowers because you're here you're painting flowers the cherry blossom tree was very very pretty that was probably one of my favorites um, I think it's also just like the moon was really pretty although if you like moon paintings I just did hey do I have it in here I don't it's out in the living room but I just did a uh, unicorn like I don't want to say it's a sunset because the moon is up but it could be a sunset and the moon's just right there um, but it came out really pretty so if you like unicorns or know of anyone who likes unicorns or you like landscapes and kind of flat fantasy sort of thing um, definitely go check that one out um, it's actually if you go to my page my like my youtube channel there's a little section of all my live classes um, like my upcoming ones and um, oh hello thank you my husband just brought this in so this is the one that I just painted let me see I can see myself um, this is what I painted so it's got the really pretty moon and the landscape so if you would like to paint this um, you can find that on my Facebook page I post all of my events um, where you, so just like the one that I don't know if everyone found me on YouTube or found Facebook and then came to YouTube but all of my classes um, are in the form of events on YouTube so you can find them there um, yes this will be available after uh, just like I've said in the past all of my classes that I teach um, on YouTube right now are just staying on YouTube I don't take my classes down you don't need to tip me to uh, receive the full thing or anything like that they just um, they stay on my YouTube. You can tip if you would like to, but it's not necessarily it's not necessary in order to view anything. The unicorn. Okay, it's a lot less hard than than it might think it is. It's literally just a background background, and then there's like a lot of black. And I will teach you how. It's just you have to th break it down into simple shapes. There's the body, there's the leg, and then there's the face and the neck. It's a lot easier, I promise, um, than you might think it is. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. The one thing I hate about doing stuff online is that I like paint it for like a month later so that everybody can see the event before we actually paint it. So I have to wait like a month in order <laughs> until I can paint it again. So, which I'm sad about, but I'm glad. Um, I'm glad to be able to do that for everyone. See, I think I missed some. Uh, this is your first palette knife painting. Awesome. Birds, trees, koi. I have a koi over here, which I'm thinking of doing another koi, but um, yes, I will go over the colors again in about five minutes because um, I will be doing. I'll be going over all the supplies that I'm going to be using, so I'll just I'm just going to wait until we start class to do that. Ooh, I love Monet painting that I made a while ago. I would really love to try some Van Gogh sunflowers. That would be really fun. I don't know how copyright stuff those. Like I've always wanted to teach like the Starry Night Van Gogh or. Um, some of the other Monet, like, I think it's Monet, um, that has, like, the, the bridge. I've always wanted to do that one. Um, but I don't, like, I'm teaching somebody else's work. And not, a, not only somebody else's work, but, like, somebody who's really famous. And I wouldn't want to get copyright striked for that. So that's why I'm teaching all my own stuff. Hello. Welcome, welcome for everyone just joining. Um first class hello you've been eyeing the lovely koi yeah except oh my gosh it's getting windy can you hear that it's really windy here in San Diego right now um, 
Yeah, I don't know if you have to get some sort of license in order to teach um, famous paintings or famous painters work. Um, I can look into it for sure. Do you guys hear that? I don't know if you can hear it. Can't hear it? Okay, great. That's perfect. Um, which painting am I teaching today? I am painting the uh, garden flower pot. I will, once class starts, I will switch to my, um, my teaching mode. But yeah, funny thing about the koi is it's actually, like, I love the colors and I love everything about it, except when I was teaching it, I forgot to teach and I forgot to paint on a top fin. So, I can't, so every time I look at it, I'm just like, it doesn't have a fin, it doesn't have a top fin. And I, every time I look at it, I just want to go back in with, like, strokes to make a fin. I haven't done it yet. Maybe I'll do it tonight. We'll see. Any canvas prep work done? Nope, this is just a clean canvas. I, you can't see what I'm looking at, but it's, I didn't do anything to my, um, my, yes, it is windy. Yeah, I didn't do anything to my canvas. Um, very windy in East County too. Yeah, I'm sure. Cold. I am in San Diego, but I also, used to live in like the mountains and I really miss the snow like I don't I I grew up in the snow when I was little so I didn't I personally didn't have to deal with like shoveling snow and things like like my dad always did that but I miss the snow I miss like counting down the days until the first snowfall um hello Nora hello Sylvie yes I'm excited to paint this one um, we, <laughs> Jerry, apparently we're going to get your storm from Oregon. Apparently it's just windy everywhere. Um, Kathy, you mentioned the pot. The pot looks so real. That is probably because of the harsh reflections that we're going to do, which is kind of more of like a abstract way of doing it, but we'll definitely get to it. I'm excited for it. Hello from Georgia. You live in Maine. Hardly any snow. How sad. I feel like if it gets really, really cold, it should just be snow. Like, to be cold and wet without snow, is, I feel like is a waste. Unless you like wet and not snow. Um. <sighs> Alright. Everybody got their paints out? Got about a minute left less than a minute having tonight snowfall in Toronto that fish painting on the wall looks so beautiful thank you um, as I was saying before it's a koi fish without <laughs> without a top fin because I was teaching it at the brew coffee spot at one point and I it wasn't until the owner looked at it who like loves koi fish he's like you didn't have a top fin I'm like ow <laughs> well I'll paint it later Hello, Bernice. Hello, hello. Got your paints. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So here we are. Here we are with the lovely setup. All right, hello and welcome everyone to the beginning of class, the official beginning of class. Um, we're just going to go over all of our supplies um, and then we'll jump into a couple announcements, just some general announcements, and then we'll get to painting. Um, will I be able to see this on iTunes or anywhere else? Um, not iTunes. It'll stay on. It'll stay on um, YouTube. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, all of my live classes, um, along with other speed paintings and everything else, um, they stay on my YouTube channel. So um, if you like this class and you want to subscribe, make sure to give a like. Subscribe. Um, if you want to get notifications of uh, future videos or classes, um, make sure to hit the bell notification and then you'll get, um, you'll automatically get a notification from YouTube when I do go live. 
um, or if I upload a video. So um, if you like speed painting, which I love speed paintings, um, you'll get notifications of that too. Hello, Linda. Hello, Camilla. Hello, everyone. Welcome to class. Okay, we're going to go over our supplies real quick. I'm sorry if I'm like hitting my mic. Uh, and just for those of you who weren't here earlier, it is very windy outside and it was raining earlier. So I apologize, I apologize for any background noise that you may hear. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So for the colors, um, as normal, we're going to have our black and our white. Just typical black and white. Um, and these colors do not have to be exact. Um, if you do have the exact colors, it'll make it look more like mine. But like any painting, it's going to um, it's it's gonna be how it is. Um, so you can choose to, to have different colors. You can do blue flowers or yellow flowers or whatever other flowers you want. So um, let's see. People are saying I have an echo now. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Do Your I? audio's cracking. Oh. So huh. you might want to It's weird. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Hi Lincoln. My little my little Lincoln. Um I'm gonna go ahead and switch my mic and see if that helps. Is there still cracking? Let me know. Um, I'll just switch it. It's fine. Um, okay, let me know if that's better. You will probably hear that my audio is a lot clearer, but it also means that you can hear some of the background noise and wind. But hopefully that'll be better. Um, just let me know. Let me know if you can hear that better. And if that's okay. Again, you will hear some of the background noise, but my audio will probably be a lot clearer. We were trying to figure out if we should do the Blue Yeti, which is what it's on now, or the other, or this other mic. So, um, again, just let me know. Okay, back to, um, back to colors. Um, you do not have to use the same colors that I do. Um, so I have my black, my white. Um, I will be using a raw umber, which is just a dark brown. Um, let's see. And then I have, where'd my purple go? Oh, and then I have the primary colors. Good, I'm glad that it's better. Um, I have the primary colors. So uh, permanent red, yellow, medium hue. And then I'm using um, Thayo Blue. You can use an ultramarine blue, um, but the table, which is what we're using the blue for, is this really pretty, like almost marine blue. Um, I love phthalo blue. Um, I love it so much more than ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is cooler and um, phthalo blue is warmer. So it really just depends on, it just depends on what you want. Um, yeah, the crackling is probably the wind that's outside. Um, that's how, like, this mic is just so clear, though. <laughs> um, and then for the colors, we will be using purple and pink. Now, if you do not have purple and pink, you can make purple with your red and blue. And then you can always lighten it up with white. And then for your pink, um, you can have some red and white with a tad bit of blue to maybe not make it so... Um, orangey um, but that's up to you so those are the colors that I'm going to be using if you have kids or you don't want to deal with the um, the outside the out edge of your uh, of your canvas you can tape it um, so you can just tape the outside and then you won't have to worry about that um, it's really good for kids because then it'll be really nice. Um, colors again. Yeah, so colors are black and white, primary colors, which is red, yellow, and blue. I, I'm using phthalo blue. And then your pink and your purple. Um, if you have a green, you can use that, um, or you can just use um, your yellow and your blue to mix a green. It's totally 
totally fine. Um, I hope it's not hard. I'm eight years old. Hello, welcome. Um, honestly, I don't think it's hard. It looks really hard because there's a lot of layers, but I will break it down into all those layers and you'll be able to follow along with me, okay? Um, there's not a whole lot of blending in this picture. Um, the only thing that there is potentially blending is the table, um, which I'll kind of go over before we get there. Um, and there's like a little blending on the right side where the bricks are, but again, there's not a lot. So, um, that's, that's that. Um, and then for today, um, if you have the brush kit, so this is the brush kit. Um, I have a couple other ones in here. Um, but this is the brush kit. We're going to be using a few different ones in here. Um, mainly the big filber brush. You can also use a one inch flat for the background. Um, and, and then I'm also going to be using a flat brush, uh, probably the um, angle brush, but it, you don't have to use the angle brush, just whatever flat brush that you have. Um, and then, let's see, what else am I using? Um, oh, and then my smaller filbert brush. But I will let you know what we're using when we're using it so you guys don't get confused and overwhelmed. Right now it's like the beginning of like a semester of class where you're like looking at the syllabus and you're getting overwhelmed. Don't get overwhelmed, I promise. It'll, it'll be okay. <laughs> um, we're just, I'm just going over everything. And then you have um, your water, your palette, or paper plate, whatever you prefer. Um, and then a paper towel. For the palette, I would suggest to get something that is flat. I know a lot of us have the you know, either the round or the kind of oval shapes with all of the little pots inside. For this specific class, because we are using a palette knife, you're going to want something flat so that you can actually grab the paint with the, um, with the palette knife. Okay, so I have this um, large clear one. Um, I just got it off of Amazon. I can leave a link in the description. Um, but it's flat and it's really great for using palette knives. Um, if you don't have something like that, then just grab a plate um, and you can either throw that away or if it's a plate um, that you use, you can wash it off pretty easily. Um, and then, so this this specific one came in the kit, the brush kit that I um, already talked about. Um, is this painting oil or canvas? I don't understand the question. I'm painting on a canvas with acrylics. So not oil, but oil or canvas. <laughs> it's either both or, okay. Um, yes, I'm using acrylics. Um, yes, so this came in the kit. If you did buy the um, specific palette knife kit, um, it'll come with a couple other shapes, which um, if you want to use this long one for the texture on the back, you can. Um, and then you also have a smaller one that looks like this, but it's smaller. And you can also use some of that for some of the smaller um, flowers. So it's up to you. I will be mostly using this one because it comes in the brush kit. And I want to try to use what most of the people have for my classes. That's why I bought a kit specifically um, that was on the cheaper side. I think it's like under $20 and it has a whole array of brushes okay um i believe that is it um for those of you who don't know i have a facebook i have an instagram um i have a patreon all of those are in the let's see right there to your your left um the link tree slash samantha anderson artist that is where all of my main links are um for my youtube and my everything else um i mean you're on youtube but for everything else, um, including Facebook and Patreon and stuff. So if you have any questions, um, I also have my website on there. So there's that. But yeah, I think that's it. Does anybody have any questions before we start? Now is the time to ask. Um, and you're all here live with me, so you get to you get to ask questions. So let me know if you have any questions, and we will get started. I'm like tempted to put tape on my canvas, but, um, oh, my canvas. I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas. It's a stretch canvas, so it has side tops and bottoms, which um, sometimes it is 
um, annoying to have to paint the sides, but if you want to just put it right on the wall, it's really nice. Uh, yes, you have a question. Oh, while you're typing out that question, um, my husband just reminded me of something. I have an artist community on Facebook um, that everybody gets to paint and um, everybody gets to share their work. So if you want to share your work with me and everybody else in the class, I think there's like 300 of you watching um, and you want to paint and post it, I have a link. I think my husband just posted a link and um, you can join there and join in the fun. Um, I have a specific album that you can add it to um, and then everybody who paints it later on can see your work as well, okay? Um, I have a couple questions. What size canvas? I am using a 11 by 14 canvas, but you can you, you can do it on a 9 by 12, an 8 by 10. I wouldn't go larger than an 11 by 14 only because it, unless you're a really fast painter, just with the live class, it does take a lot longer. So if you are going to do a larger canvas, I would suggest waiting until um, the live replay comes out because then you can pause it and finish your section and then move on. Um, yes, we're starting soon. Yes, we will do a light sketch before we um, start painting. Um, I know this is done with a palette knife. Can I go ahead and use brushes? Um, we're doing most of this with brushes. We're just adding texture and the flowers with our palette knife. So um, don't be afraid. Um, yeah, it's okay if you don't have the same brushes. Just use what you have. I'll, I'll let you know what, I, what I'm using for um, certain elements of it. But if you don't have exactly what that is, that's totally fine. Um, and yes, this tutorial will be available after the class. It'll be available just with the same link on my Facebook. Um, I have a whole playlist of all my live replay classes, okay? Um, yeah, I think we're ready to get going. Let me grab a drink of water. <clears throat> okay, so the first colors we're going to get out um, are our browns, our whites, our red, and yellow. So, actually the first thing I'm going to do first is I'm going to get out a little bit of my blue and my white. You can really do this with any color, but since the, um, since the table is blue, I'm going to do it with blue. So I'm getting, um, no, you don't need a sponge. Um, who taught me? I am a self-taught painter, actually. Um, okay, so I'm going to get my smallest brush. Um, I just have a smallest. If you have the kit, um, I think this is either the four or the two. I use them both kind of intertwiningly. Um, so just get a small round brush. And I'm going to mix together just a little bit of my blue and my white adding a little bit of water this is uh, we are going to be sketching out it in this color you can use a different color if you want to just make sure that it is very translucent so that you can paint over it Okay, so this is what I have. It's very watery. That's what we want. That's what we want. So I'm gonna grab this and let's see. So the table is about maybe a fourth of, you know, if you cut this in half short wise and then you need to go another half. This is where the table is. It's a super straight line. <laughs> um, and then it's going to go all the way and go off, off the page. As you can see, it does not have to be a perfect line. And I'm going to draw mine just a little bit darker so that you guys can see it. But I would say go only as dark as what you can see because we're going to be painting over this. So once you get your table in, you're going to... Um, I have Q-tips. Do we need that? Theoretically, if you don't have a palette knife and you want to do the blossoms with Q-tips, you can do that. Um, 
I have Arteza, Locotex Basics, but they're not specifically heavy body. Is this all right? Um, are they in bottles or are they in the tubes? Craft paint in the bottles tend to be more liquid. Um, and you might have a hard time doing the, um, doing the flowers when we get to it. So then the second thing you're going to, um, probably if you put this into like thirds, on the right third, you'll just kind of do a line. So this is, I imagined when I painted this, I imagined this being, I actually painted this from a, um, a picture that I found off of a, um, free photo reference. So this is the, um, what, what am I saying? The drain. There we go. The drain that's on the, on the wall. And this is just going to separate the bricks from the kind of cement wall. Not cement wall, but just like textured wall that we're going to do. Okay, so that's really all of the pre-drawing. We're just going to break this up into three sections. And we're going to put in everything else after we're doing, um, after we're done with that part. Um, or after we're done with the background. Sorry. What am I saying? I don't know. Um, okay. Where's my... Brown. My brown disappeared. Oh, I just can't see it. It's so dark. Alright, so get out your brown. And I'm... I'm used to getting colors out just as I need it because sometimes I'll paint something and I'll think I'll use a specific color and then I end up not using that color and then I waste that paint. So get in the habit of really just getting the colors out when you're going to use them so that you don't, um, so that you don't waste paint, okay? Um, Kamala is asking, what size of canvas am I using for today's painting? I am using an 11 by 14 stretch canvas, but you do not have to use the same um, you don't have to use the same size as me. I would say use my size or smaller. Um, if you're going to use bigger, I would say to paint with the replay so you can pause it and catch up. Um, Betty says, is the cement wall outside or inside? I pictured this all being outside. Like, I don't know. I guess it could be inside. But I pictured this just being like a table in the backyard. And there's just different textures of walls and, you know, a tree that's coming down. Hello. Hello. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and make this um, light colored with our brown and our white. I'm going to grab a little bit more white here. So I can mix that together. And we're making a tan. So... I'm going to rinse out my small brush. I'm not going to use that for a while now. And I'm just going to mix it with the brush that I'm going to paint with. So I'm getting my large filbert brush. If you don't have a filbert brush, that's totally fine. You can use a, um, a one inch flat brush or a one inch wash, three quarters wash, whatever you have. Just, a, just some large brush that you have. Um, And this background is we're going to mix our dark brown with our white. Now, if you wanted this brown to be a little bit um, more on the warmer side, you're going to add just a tiny bit of yellow to it, which is what I'm going to do now. I believe I did that in the original painting. Just adding a touch of yellow. And it's going to just warm it up a little bit. Will this be replayed later? Yes, you can watch all my classes later. Just uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't so you can find it later. All right, so I have these kind of mixed colors. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lighter colors in the middle 
on the darker colors around the edge. Now in the picture, you'll see kind of blotches of darker colors that is added later with the palette knife. So we're just putting the base color on here. Um, grab a little bit of water so it can move on the canvas better. And I'm just going to start putting this on here. Grab a little bit more water, add some more white. And you're just going to, with the amount of paint that you have and the water, you're just going to move that around. Adding a mixture of all of those colors. Thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. It does help. It helps me grow, helps me reach more people, helps me reach all the painters who want to continue painting. So I'm just adding in my different colors. I'm kind of making it darker in the corners. But as you can see, I'm not being very specific with which colors um, I'm adding. And I'm going over this line. I want to go over this line that we made in the middle here. I'm making it a little bit darker on the edge. And if you do have a, um, if you do have a stretched canvas with sides, don't forget to paint the side, this um, kind of tan color as well. Hello. Kind of going darker on the corner. Hello for anyone just joining. If you're just watching, let me know. I love when people are just here to be here, just supporting those who are painting. And I'm pretty regularly going back into my water, just dipping maybe the first like one third of it into the water to help mix everything together. Adding my tan color, adding my white. It's okay if everything's not blended perfectly because we're going to be adding texture later anyways. So if anything, it'll just make our job easier later. Hello. So you're watching now, I'm gonna paint later. Awesome. I might add a little bit more darkness on this corner. So all of this right now is still wet. So this is like prime time to just keep adding your different colors, your darks, your light. And when I say darks, your lights, I mean like the dark brown or the white that we're adding just to kind of change it up. And remember that most of this, like everything where my hand is right now, most of this is going to be covered. So keep that in mind when you're blending. Like don't, don't stress over this blending. because you're not even going to be able to see it. <laughs> um, Christine says, I got home late, so I'm just going to watch tonight and rewatch paint later. That's great. Yeah, I know a lot of people who um, 
are either they they want to kind of watch so that they can see if they want to do it. Um, I find that a lot of people will look at a painting and be, oh, this is really hard and get, you know, discouraged and they don't want to paint it. Um, but then once they watch the process, it's like, oh, like when you break it down into steps, like all of a sudden you can do it now. Um, that's actually really why I like posting the speed paintings. Um, that those piece paintings are really from you other than me just like watching them um, you can you know you can see the process for what goes into a painting um, just subscribe and liked first time uh, I like to watch first and paint yep and then watch again yep <laughs> um, first time we're just watching for now thank you you're welcome I don't have brown what should I do okay so brown for anyone who does not have brown, sorry, I should have said this earlier. If you don't have brown, you can make it with the primary colors. So your red, your yellow, and your uh, blue. So just mix equal parts of all of those together. And then you'll have a, you'll have probably more of a chocolatey brown if you want to get more of a, um, although the, the chocolatey brown would probably be fine for what we're doing. Any color brown would be fine for what you're doing. You could even, you could do an orange wall for all we care. Um, choose whatever colors you want. But if you want the color that I have, I would do primary colors. Do more on the cooler side, so more blue than red and yellow. Um, a warm, a warm orangey brown. Um, that would be the opposite. So you'd add more blue. Um, and then you can also add just the tiniest bit. And when I mean tiniest bit, like almost nothing. Um, start with almost nothing of your black and that will darken it up a little bit. Um, wait, I'm not ready. Not ready for what? I'm not, I'm not moving on until, um, until I, I get some thumbs up or something, um, from most of you. Uh, will you save this? Yes. Yeah, so all of my classes will be saved on my YouTube. I don't take them down. Hello. Um, yeah, so the way that my classes work, at least for the live, um, I'll usually do a section and then I will wait for you. So, um, with 300 plus people painting with me, everybody goes at a little bit different speed. So it's really helpful for me to know where you're at, if you're still painting, if you're all set. So make sure that you give me the thumbs up, um, when you're ready so that I can know when the majority of people are ready. Okay, I am seeing a few people say they're ready. I'm going to wait for a couple more. Whoa, that's the wrong one. I just like adjusted my chair and didn't realize I was adjusting it. I was trying to make it go up more. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm seeing some thumbs up. Okay, so this is, this is a fun thing um yeah i will explain my patreon when i have another low um because we're ready we're ready to move on um, but thank you for asking i will i'll let you know um, more about that in the next section when we have a break um okay so you're gonna take your palette knife and if you want to start <laughs> if you want to start in this section right here where you're not going to be able to see it that is a perfect place to start, um, especially if you've never done this before. So what you're going to do is this is um, called breaking. So essentially, um, just watch right now, and I will um, I will do it, and so you can see it. So we're just going to be adding texture. I'm going to grab um, with the back side of my palette knife. So you'll see here. Let's see. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. With the back side, I'm going to scrape some of that. So now you can see, let's see. So now you can see that, um, I don't know, is that adjusting? Anyways, you can see that that's on the tip of it, on like the back side. And you're going to, you'll notice the angle of this. I 
and I'm barely touching it. So when I first started, I was touching a big chunk of it. Um, and I would say that I was, I had too much of an angle. Um, so if I have a little less angle, I'm going to slowly just add some texture. And that's really it. You can add some texture all over. And then if you want to do like different colors, like you want to have more of your white, um, you can do a little bit lighter. No, so I was, I was using my brown, so not my black. Although you can do that, but so I'm just going to mix a little bit of this white together. So I have a little bit of a different color to work with. I was using brown. So if I wanted to use like a different color, I could come in here, scrape that off. And then I could add some different colors. So I'm kind of staying in a um, kind of, I'm either going directly to the side or directly down or up. So I'm kind of staying perpendicular to everything. I'm not going like diagonal. So it's all up to you how you add this. And just have fun, play with it. Again, this is still just the background. This is get used to the angles of the palette knife and how that affects how much paint. Um, let's see. I don't have time to paint this right now. Will you be able to watch it later? Yes, you can watch all my classes at a later time. I don't take them down off of YouTube. Um, people are asking what color. So I just used my dark brown and then I added um, some white to my brown to get a little bit of a lighter shade. And go up and if you have barely any on your palette knife you can just kind of push it on there and it'll catch some of the texture of the canvas and add texture that way the main thing I would say is to don't be afraid of it okay let let it do what it wants to do and I'm sure it'll come out great. Okay, uh, which size knife are you using? I'm using the three. So it's a pretty standard. This is the size that comes in most kits that come with it. Um, if you wanted to use the longer one, um, you can. Um, that would also work for this one. I wouldn't say to use the smaller one. I would say you could go bigger but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go smaller. Go big or go home. <laughs> um, I don't have a palette knife. What to use to get similar textures? Um, for this specific one, you could probably use, some people use credit cards, old credit cards. Um, if you wanted to try, you could use a butter knife to get some of that texture. Um, but... I don't know, be creative, find something that's flat. I'm gonna add some white on here. And then after you're done, make sure that you wipe off your palette knife onto um, the like a napkin so that it doesn't dry on there. Because we will be using it later for our um, for our flowers. Okay. Um, while everybody is doing that, feel free to ask questions. Um, but honestly, just go for it. Just have fun with it. Um, for those of you who asked about um, tips and Patreon, um, if you want to tip me, all of the information is over on your left side. Um, I'm sorry, your right side. Um, 
I have Venmo Cash App, and then I also have a PayPal, which is SamanthaAndersonArtist at gmail.com. It does have my maiden name, so if you're <laughs> if you're giving that way, if you're in Canada or anything like that, um, just know that it's Burns and not Anderson, but it's still me. Um, and then for Patreon, um, Patreon is, is essentially a monthly tip um, that you get a lot of content for. So let's say you wanted to give $7 a tip, you could just do a $7 Patreon, um, which you get access to all of the exclusive classes that I have taught over the last f four months. Um, so it's like every other week I do an extra class, I do quick tip videos, um, I do, let's see what else do I do, you also have access to polls um, and things for the live classes too, but yeah. That's pretty much it. It's just extra classes and extra content um, with traceables and things like that. Um, whatever else we're doing um, for that week or that month. But yeah. Um, let's see. Um, what brand of paint am I using? I am using Hobby Lobby brand. Um, so I think this is a master's touch. Um, but Liquitex Basics, um, any student or professional grade, I tend to stay away from the bottles because that is craft paint and I can't, it, it the paint tends, it's a little bit lower quality, it tends to be more translucent, I have a harder time with it, um, and you can't do as much with it, I feel like. Um, for crafts it works great because it flows well, um, kids don't need to use water with it, you know, less materials and things like that, but for canvas painting I would definitely definitely um, try to get something that's in the tubes and it's a little bit higher quality um, what hmm, what is board you have put on the canvas what do you mean the board I'm not sure I'm not sure what you mean um, my brother is painting with me but we're done okay Perfect. Yeah, let me know if you're done with the palette knife. Um, I know everybody, this is a learning experience, so I know everybody's going to go at a different speed. And I want to just make sure that I am looking out for those who are new at this. It is a two-hour class. Usually I try to keep it between an hour and a half to two hours. Um, that's the goal. Um... If you are ready to move on, we're going to go ahead and get out our red paint because we're going to move on to the bricks. I'm seeing some people say they're ready. Perfect. So get out your get out your red. And here there's going to be a tad bit of an ombre. Um, also get out your also get out your black. Can you guys hear me when I turn around? Should I just not talk when I'm turning around? This is the first time I'm using the Blue Yeti. I'm used to it being on me so I can turn every which way. But if I need to not talk when I'm um, turned around. Should you clean your knife? Yes, please clean your knife. Because we're going to be using it for a different color and we don't want to have dried paint on it. Um, so you can either just wipe it off with a paper towel. You can get it wet and then wipe it off. Um, up to you. So I got out my a little bit of black. My red. I already have yellow on my palette. And we're gonna we're gonna get going okay so for this next part we're gonna make a kind of a maroony brick red um, and I'm just gonna use the paintbrush that I'm gonna paint with so whatever big brush that you painted the background uh, of the wall with um, you can get whatever brush that was um, and just a, a note on brushes don't leave them in the water um don't don't leave them in the water because it, it'll eventually loosen up the glue and the furl which is the metal piece and you'll have bristles coming out um so once you're done with your your brushes rinse it out put it on you know dab it dry and then put it down um we're going to be doing red with a little bit of brown it makes kind of this maroony red we're going to be putting that down here and then we're going to be adding slowly adding 
a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white with this. But honestly, it's going to be as we're going. We're not going to pre-mix this um, because it's just, I, it's all kind of a little bit of an abstract painting and um, the colors don't have to be exact or perfect, okay? So I'm going to take this maroon color that I have. It's just um, brown. Or if you don't have any brown left, if you're making brown, you can add a, like a tiny bit of black um, to make kind of this maroon color. This is going to be the dark color that's down here. What brush? I'm using the biggest brush that I have. So just the, uh, the filbert brush that I used over here. Then you're going to start um, adding more of your red and your yellow to make this kind of bright brick color. It's kind of a uh, dark orangey color. So I used red and brown first to get this dark color. And then I added my red and my yellow to brighten it up to make it more of like a brick color. Um, red with brown. I used red with brown, but if you don't have any brown left, you can use black, um, but I would suggest using brown, not black. Black can ruin your color really, really fast. I'm just going to, I'm going to lighten this up with a little bit more yellow and a tad bit of white. Um, do you start different projects at the same time and leave and come back later? Do you find it helps? Um, sometimes if I'm painting something and I'm not liking the way it comes, I will stop what I'm doing and just, or get to a place where I can stop, leave it be, and then come back a little later. Um, because sometimes you need to just take a step back and kind of, you know, or literally take a step back and, um, um, like, like a few feet back and then you can see it from a whole new perspective. Again, so I'm just lightening up the color a little bit um, with white, a little bit of yellow. And then once you get to here, I think I'm going to add a little bit of this color down here, just to lighten this up down here. I added a little bit of white to my color. So now I'm going to start going back into my brown and my red. And kind of blend that in. This is going to be kind of the um, shadow. When you get up top, you can do all brown and a little bit of black, or just black on top, because that's where um, the leaves are going to be. So see how I just kind of went darker there? It's kind of like a ombre. This does not have to be perfect. 
because um, we're going to be putting in like our lines for our um, our bricks, kind of like in that green and blacky color later, um, and it, it'll all it'll all look better. I promise. So don't forget if you have a stretched canvas to do the side. If at any point you guys have questions, make sure to just let me know. Um, it's not like a normal, you know, in-person class where I can see see what you're doing and see if you need help with anything. Um, I'm here. I'm your teacher right for now. I can help as much as I can. And while this is still kind of wet, we're going to put in a little bit of a darker color, almost like pre-painting in our um, our leaves. We're going to be painting in our leaves, but sometimes it's nice to get a little bit more of a um, a shadow for where it's going to be. So while this is wet, I'm just adding in a little bit of darker color, and I can even do that over. Here. So again, I'm just very, very loosely grabbing a little bit of black and just kind of flicking my brush, adding that in. Um, in my training, did I take any training with drawing perspective? In my training as a artist? Um, that's debatable, because I'm actually a self-taught teacher. Um, so, in school, I was a theater major, and a I had a minor in ceramics. So I only had to take a few art, like actual art classes other than my ceramics. Um, which was like 2D and 3D. I actually didn't take anything. Like I didn't. I don't. I've never actually taken a painting class. Like I've done classes like online or. Um, but I'm really keen on like figuring things out for myself. Um, so I've just, I've just painted for a long time, um, and I've taught in other mediums like dancing and um, I've taught acting and things like that. So I've I've taught in other mediums. Um, so it was very natural for me to teach something else that I loved, um, including painting. Um, but I, th I took, I did take a drawing class, um, cause that was part of, but I, I've never actually taken a painting class. I remember taking a watercolor class when I was little. And I remember watercolor scaring me, but now it intrigues me. Um, and I recently bought some watercolors so that I can so that I can try it out because uh, I've found a few artists on on um, YouTube that I love, and they've inspired me to paint with watercolor. Okay, Pat says that she is ready. Yeah, let me know if you're ready. I'll just talk your ear off. <laughs> okay, so we have our wall. We have our um, our brick, kind of our shadow. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a either a medium sized brush or a round, uh, a large round brush. You're going to get some of your um, some of your white. And you're just going to make. a drain. 
So I just got some white. Got a little bit of water. And I'm not going to go all the way up because most of this is going to be covered with um, the brush anyways. I'm just trying to make this straight. Straight as I can. It's okay if it blends in with the other colors. But then after that, you're going to take, you're going to dry your brush off and just take the tiniest bit of like a blackish reddish color and give a little bit of a shadow on the right side of it. Just like that. So I got my, I'll just tell you what I did. Again, I got my round brush. Um, if you have a small flat brush, you could use that. Put my white. I let it blend a little bit, and that's okay. I can always come back over with just my, um, I can come back over with just my pure white if I wanted to make it brighter. Um, and then I added here, I'll zoom this in a little bit. I added just a dark, whatever dark brownish reddish color I had. Um, I added a little bit of shadow just to give it a tiny bit of dimension. Does that make sense? Just gives it something extra. Mm. Really? Really or ready? Ready. Okay, ready. Um, ready as in you're done with the, the white drain and the shadow? Um, for those of you who joined a little bit late, make sure that your, um, your video, like the toggle on the bottom, make sure that it is all the way up to the right, um, so that you're actually watching in real time, so that you're not behind. Because you could be commenting something that we talked about, like, a few minutes ago. All right, I'm going to wait for a couple more people and we're going to go ahead and do our blue table. So with the blue table, we are going to be um, adding on our color and then we're going to be pre-adding like a, um, a little dark spot, a little shadow over here um, while it's still wet and that'll help everything kind of blend. But just like everything else in this painting, like there's a lot of layers that go into it, so if it's not blended perfectly, that's okay. Um, it's very much a, a more abstract type of approach to a painting, which gives you a lot of freedom and a lot of flexibility within this, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my small brush, wherever that went. Did I put it back? Where'd it go? Hmm. It disappeared. That's okay. I'll just get another brush. Um, Alright, so I have another small brush. I'm going to go ahead and pre-mix this color because there is a larger portion of it. So here are my colors. Um, can you see this? It's hard because it's clear. Um, so I'm going to take some of this white and some of this blue. And I'll probably need more white than that, so I'm just going to grab more of this blue and more white wherever that went I'm going to mix that together and see what it comes how dark it is or how light it is okay so you're going to come out with something like this Now we do want to kind of tone it down. So what I mean by tone it down is we are going to add the tiniest bit of gray to it. So you can see right now that this is pretty bright in comparison to 
what's on the screen. Um, so I'm going to add a touch of black to tone down the color so it's not so bright. Which brush am I using? I'm using, I was using the four, but now I'm using the two. I'm just using a small round brush. I couldn't find the four that I was using. I don't know where it went. Probably fell or something. It's weird. Oh, here it is. I found it. It rolled off my tile. And you're just going to keep adding a little bit of black until you like the tone um, of the, like the saturation of the color you're going to use. I think I like this color. Alright, so this is the color I'm using. You can see that's a little bit more toned down than it was before. Um, Phyllis says we have a storm coming through. Uh, yeah, I think we're in the middle of a storm too. It's very windy and it's very, um, it's been raining all day. Where are you from? Where's everybody from? I know we kind of talked about this earlier, but if you didn't comment earlier about where you're from, let me know. We always have a lot of Canadians in here, which is kind of fun. Um, but yeah. Let me know when you have a color that you like. And we can go ahead and just put that on. Have Ontario, Chicago. How's the weather in Chicago? Whenever I think of Chicago, I think of like bright and sunny. But I'm sure it's not like that all the time. Pennsylvania. Okay. Tennessee. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get uh, started on the table. Sorry, I'm just cleaning my brush because I went back in to fix the red. So we're just gonna fill in this whole area with our blue. And as we go, we can add a little bit of white over here to lighten it up, like that's where the sun is hitting. So it's gonna be a little bit brighter right here. And then over here, it's gonna be darker. So we're gonna add more of our black there um, while it is still wet um, so that um, it can blend a little bit easier but again it does not have to blend perfectly so I'm just going to kind of start anywhere it doesn't really matter where you start gradually adding um, some water so that can flow a little bit nicer. Got people from all over. That's really fun. Well, welcome from all over. Um, so I'm just using the tip of my brush to get a clean line for the table. And then I'm going to come back in with some white while this is still wet. Kind of blend that in. 
get a clean line going this direction. Now that this is all wet and I can kind of manipulate it a little bit better, um, well for one, I'm going to paint the bottom of it because I for one am awful about remembering this, so I'm surprised that I remembered it now. bottom and get this side real quick. Alright. I can come back in with some white. Kind of brighten up this area. Just do long, long strokes. And then I can come back in with black and darken this area. And we're going to always add a little bit more once we add where our, um, once we add where our paw is. I just added some black there. I'll add more black once I get the pot in. Rinse out my brush. Um, Helen asks, if our painting turns out really good, is it legal to sell it? Or who would we credit with the original idea of the painting? Um, that is a very good question. Um, so that's actually one of the reasons why I started painting and teaching my own work. Um, cause if people were tipping me, you know, and essentially paying money, but you know, it is a tip for me teaching somebody else's work. I felt really convicted about that. Um, and which is why I started teaching my own work. Um, if you were to paint a design from another artist, so this is, this is, you know, me and my, my ideas and your painting my ideas and you want to sell that I think that I mean for me I think that that's okay um like I'm okay with it like I could give you permission to sell your painting your version of my painting because I you know I taught it taught it for you um but at the same time I would use this painting time as a way to practice and a way to get confident in your own design. So there's a bunch of free resources, um, free royalty free pictures, even that I use. Um, and so I'm not, you know, they're free pictures. I'm not using, I'm not taking anything from anyone. I'm not stealing ideas. Um, they're free pictures to use, but I've stopped teaching and I've stopped painting from other people's paintings because those are their ideas. Um, so f in order for you to feel confident and comfortable selling your own work um, or selling a piece, I would suggest to use this as an opportunity to gain experience, but then to come up with your own um, ideas. Um, and that's honestly, that's what my Patreon is for. Um, I really encourage being able to build up other artists and if you want to use it as an opportunity to, you know, better your abilities to be able to create something um, for you and that, you know, you can take all those, um, 
not designs you can take these experiences and to be able to create your own stuff um that's great i think that that would be better for you as an artist um, in the long run i hope that helps in answering your question <coughs> You could always, if you did, like for this specific painting, if you did want to sell it, you could always, you know, on the back of it, original idea or something like that by Samantha Anderson Artist. But I don't think, like, if you're giving it to a family member or something like that, I think if you're selling it online, then it may be giving some sort of, you know, credit. But again, use this as an opportunity to be able to create your own ideas. Okay, I'm seeing some ready, ready, ready thumbs up. Okay. So now we are going to do the pot. Um, I'm going to grab a angled brush because I find that doing an angled brush is easier. If you do not have an angled brush, an angled brush is essentially a flat brush, a flat square brush, but the top of it is um, angled hence the angled brush, okay? That's what our angled brush is. So if you have an angled brush, I would suggest using it. If you don't, then you can just use a flat brush that would work fine. And we're gonna do, let's say, we're gonna do some black and white, kind of make our gray. So I'm just making a gray a little bit. Gonna get a little bit darker. And this is probably the most abstract thing in this painting. I'm going to draw out, I'm going to just do a line and another line. And I think I'm going to do a little bit less angled. And I'm just going to connect them with a little bit of a, of a drag, like a little bit of a bottom, like kind of uh, low. What am I trying to say? Um, kind of swooping a little bit. So grab a little bit more of your paint. And I'm just going to fill this in. So now the, the bottom of it, you're going to want to have a little bit, so don't make it flat. It's not flat. You do want to make it a little bit round. To give, give the idea that this is a round pot that we're working with. And we're kind of seeing the bottom of it from a little bit of the top down. And don't make this one solid color. One solid color of your gray, or if you have a little bit of blue on your brush, that's okay. I'm just covering this in with all of my gray that I kind of pre-made. Get a little bit more of this black. And this is kind of the fun part. Um, so with this whole um, section, try to go, whenever you're going from side to side, try to go in a little bit of a, um, like an upside down rainbow and not straight across. So at this point, while it's still wet, you can add different textures. So you can add just like a black line here and there. You can get your white and go down. Like make a couple lines. Go across. Something where something might be um, like reflecting. You can get some blue in there. And get some blue and put that in there as well. You're going to get some more white. Go down. And I'm just following the shape of the 
um, of what I already created. The shape of the pot. And you can just kind of keep going and add it however much detail you want. It does get to a point though where you have a lot of paint on your um, pot and you need to kind of let it dry a little bit. While you're doing that, you can go back into your black with a smaller brush and add some of this darker, um, add some of the darker shadows. So what I'm doing here is I got my dark, I got my smallest brush and I'm just, I'm drawing a line right, right at the very bottom of the um, tin of the pot. And then I'm just here, I'm going to zoom in for you. There you go. Just zoom in for you. A little bit of this black and my brush is pretty dry and I'm just going to kind of move that around kind of mix that in I'm just using my brush to move it around It's okay if the um, you'll notice that like there's a couple black pieces that came down here and that's okay because I mean the the shadow that is we're casting is coming from a plant and so there's going to be pieces that you know come out and are giving more of a shadow here and there. So I just have a dry brush again. Dry brush, there's no water on here. And I'm just allowing the little bit of black that I have on my brush to transfer to the canvas. If you wanted to use some of your um, palette knife for some texture on the pot, you can you can also do that. Yes, um, I can repeat that last step. Ooh, let's see. Um, so the last step, I got the, um, I got a brush. 
I made sure that it was dry. There's no water on it. I put black on the very edge. I'll do, I'll do a little bit more. I have black. Dry brush. I put black on the very edge of it. Like where the... Um, where it starts. And then I use the full brush and just brush it into... Um, into the canvas. So I'm kind of like scraping it on here. So if I were to do this on... I'm just like... Kind of smushing it on there like i'm not using you know i'm not being gentle i'm just squishing it on there that's the best of how i could describe it I'm not being very gentle with that one it's just it's the dry brush dry brush effect um i'm late i'll catch on wednesday sending a tip your way oh thank you yeah um you can watch it as soon as we're done with the replay um, so, um, normally, just so everybody knows, normally, um, I would record it because I used to go live on Facebook. So I would go live on Facebook and then I would have to take that recording and then actually upload it to my YouTube on, and I would give myself a day to do that. And then it'd be available on Wednesday. Now you don't have to wait till Wednesday. Um, everything that I do now is immediately uploaded, um, to YouTube. It's saved there. Um, any link that you had for this class will still work. It'll go to this video. Um, can you recap again the stroke you did for the bottom? I already did that. Do you need me to say it again? Um, has everybody got it? You're really just adding some dark color. Ready. Okay, I have a ready, all good. Let me know when you're all kind of done with this portion. Okay, good. All right, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and make our green. So if you do not have a green, I think I'm just gonna make mine with the blue that I already have on here. Um, I'm going to grab some yellow. I don't know. Do you guys have... My colors keep on mixing. Um, that's okay. You can either add it in, like, bigger chunks and then just leave it. Um, or you can wait for it to dry a little bit and then you can go back with another layer of colors. We're going to move... Oops. We're going to move on to our green over here, um, while this dries. So if you need to go and use a little, um, you need to go and kind of wait for it to dry, then that's fine too. Um, sorry, I gotta go we'll finish later from YouTube recording. Okay, no problem, Sue. And this is just a reminder to, um, if you want to share your artwork with me, I do have an artist community. I know that it's been posted a, a few times. Um, but I have an artist community on Facebook and certain, um, I have an album for this, uh, class. So you can go in that album and upload your photo. So then later, if somebody wanted to, you know, see everybody's photo from that class, it'll all be contained in one spot. Um, when painting on wood panels, is it really necessary to prime with a sealant? Um, can't I just use gesso? Um, I haven't painted on wood very often. I would say you probably would need a sealant, um, only because wood, wood can, if you get water in there and then you seal in the water, um, the wood can rot. So if you seal it, then it prevents water from getting into the wood and rotting the wood um, and it disintegrating that way or at least keep it from disintegrating longer. Um, so I would suggest to prime it with the sealant and then gesso it. Um, I'm sure gesso could 
be a sealant in most cases, but on wood, I'm not totally sure. I would probably just Google that. That might be a better answer. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and make our green. So I have yellow over here. Um, I have some blue. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this blue. Mix together with my yellow. Now I have a pretty dark green. It's actually not that dark. Um, it's actually pretty, pretty, pretty. Um, <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of black to this. That was too much black, in case you were wondering. That's okay. Now I have a pretty dark green. Um, and you can use a big, uh, you can use a big round brush. You can use a, um, a filbert brush. I'm going to switch to a filbert brush because that's what I'm used to using. But each to their own, if you want to use a different brush than what I'm using because you're more comfortable with it, go for it. So I'm using this dark color with some water. And I am just adding some, just some texture and some, um, just my first, my first layer of kind of tree branches. Um, Mod Podge as a sealant. I'm not sure. Uh, they always recommend the sealant. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what kind of brush? I'm I'm using a small filbert brush. Um, it's the one where it's flat, but it's uh, kind of oval at 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 the top of it. So I made my green. And what I'm doing is I have the brush perpendicular. And let's see if my camera will focus. Sometimes it doesn't focus if it's like, because it's like see my palette is see through. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm turning it like so, and instead of painting flat, I'm turning it and painting so that it goes thick, and then it tapers on thin. You see that? I'll paint my finger. So then I have a bunch of little like leaves. You see that? So just in like one little stroke, I have a bunch of like leaves. And I'm not being like, I'm not being super precise. I'm just adding them. We're going to do a couple different layers of this, so, um, yeah, don't, don't worry if it's, like, not looking exactly the way you want it right now. Yes, sorry, the brush is a filbert brush. So it's flat. And then it's oval at the top. And then, um, so the problem with saying what size of brush mine is, is because unless you have the same exact brush kit as I do, which this is an eight, um, it might not be the same size. So there's no like industry standard. It's like women's clothing. There's no industry standard for what size is what. So in one size, in one brand, an eight is going to be this size. In another brand, it's going to be a completely different size. So um, in this specific kit, I'm using a number eight filbert. Um, for everyone else who does not have the kit, it's a 
medium sized, medium to small sized filbert brush. <laughs> um, if you don't have the same exact brush, if you don't have a filbert brush, I would say use the, you could use like a bigger, um, like a bigger round brush would work fine. I think that that would be totally fine. Um, will you repost video of your painting as I forgot uh, about turning on? Yes. So all of my classes saved to my YouTube. So you can see all my past classes. I actually have a playlist um, that I have a playlist of all my live classes. Um, Debbie, if you want to get notifications of when I do go live, you can um, you can subscribe and then ring the bell notification. And that goes for anyone. If you want notifications um, of when I go live. And it's actually really helpful and really useful for when you are planning to do a paint night. Because I go live about 30 minutes before the start of class. So that we can all get ready together. And you can you know, ask any questions. Um, and that will give you enough time if you did forget about it. That you can get all your paints out and still paint with me. Um, yes, I apologize. There's really no way to, like, get the glare out, um, other than me, like, holding it. Just with the angle of everything, I tried probably three or four different, um, you can't really see anything now because it's a lot of dark colors. Here's, oh, maybe this is better. Um, there's a lot of dark colors in it right now. So, but yeah, I probably tried three or four different ways of lighting this room <laughs> and it just, this was the best lighting situation for this, so. Um, can you, I'm guessing repeat the leaves part. Yeah, so I'm just using my filbert. Here, I'll go in with a lighter color so you can see what I'm doing can actually see what I'm doing. For those still working on the leaves, I'm going to go in with a lighter color just so that you can literally just see what I'm doing. Because um, I know that it's really hard to see with the darker color and see that, um, see that layer. Let's see. Um, hold on, I'm just making the color real quick. I need a lot more yellow. Oops. Okay. So, let me, let me hold this so you can get it out of the... Uh, is that much layer? Can you see that? It's not much lighter. Hmm. Let me get more yellow. <laughs> um, and in the lighter portions of this, I did add white in some cases. So I'm going to go ahead and add some white. So you, just so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm grabbing my filbert. And I'm just adding... You don't want to add the light all the way up. Because I am I picture that this is more of like in the dark. You can't really see it. Use a fan. Yeah, you can use a fan brush. That's what I'm saying. So like you can use other brushes. You don't have to use what I'm using. If you're more comfortable with something else. Okay. Now I'm adding these lighter colors just so you can see. You don't have to do that right now. Um, I'm just doing that so you can see 
It's just a bunch of small strokes. Don't get don't get too detailed with it. Just do it and just do it. <laughs> this is not a Nike endorsement, but just do it. Yeah. So I started with the darker color and then like with with each layer, I just added a little bit more. Uh, either yellow or white. Now it's like, now I'm adding a little bit more white to my color. I'm not even rinsing out my brush. I'm just adding these colors to my brush. If you want to do the lighter ones, you can. I, I can wait since I'm already doing that. Maybe there's a portion of light that's coming out here. It's hitting it. And go back into your yellow. Maybe the sun is hitting this portion of it. So I'm just doing a lot of small little strokes. Okay. I hope that's helpful. It's it's I know it's hard to see the beginning part, but the, the dark has to be there in order for you to see the light. Cuz we don't want to cover up all this darkness or else you wouldn't see the definition and all those light strokes. Does that make sense? So if this was just all light color, then you wouldn't see that definition. Whereas there's still dark colors in here. I didn't cover it all up. So you want to make sure that you're not covering it all up. And you're just kind of adding, you know, adding those colors where it is. And don't, don't go all the way up with these colors. You want to leave some of that darkness. And as you can see, my painting versus the one that I previously did, I have more yellow in my in my tree. That's okay. Or I can choose to change that and go back in with a little bit more white. I honestly, it was because I didn't have any more white on my canvas and I didn't feel like getting more white out. So you can choose to have more yellow, have more white. Um, it's totally up to you. I'm going to go back. I am going to go back in with a little bit more of this like kind of toned down green color because I like, I kind of like that vibe. And I think it pops. So just a, a lot of little tiny strokes. Maybe these ones are in the sun. They're hitting. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, we do have a lot of sirens in the back. Um, we actually live right across the street from a fire station. Um, so a lot of times we'll get fire station noises and um, or fire truck noises and then other sirens and stuff. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Go ahead, finish your layers. Take as long as you need to finish that. There's a lot of layers. And as you can see, <laughs> oh, I didn't even go around. So I need to finish that part. So I'm going to start back with the dark. The dark part of this.
Um, <coughs> yeah, somebody said depth, and that is really key here is just adding all those layers little by little, slightly changing all those colors, and making sure not to cover up all of your dark layers. So that is that is key to adding that um, those layers and that depth. Okay. Um, let's see what time is it? It is 536, at least where I am. Uh, so we have about 20 more minutes. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the rest of this. Okay, so I'm going to take my big filbert brush with the same green. We do have to move on. Um, so you can always come back to the green. You can always come back and add more layers at the end. Um, but because we only have about 20 more minutes um, and a lot of people um, have never used a palette knife before, I do want to spend a lot of time showing you guys that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take your big brush and adding in some leaves. Now this is probably the easiest thing you're going to do. With a little bit of practice, you can add these like large one stroke leaves. And then just fill in the rest here. So I'm just using my big brush and then turning it to get a point. But most of this is going to be covered. And we can always add more leaves later. Make it go off the page. This is a big plant. I didn't mean to go that light, by the way. So you're probably thinking, oh, you're starting the light ones. I didn't mean to do that, but I'm, I'm going to use it. So we're going to add light a little bit later, but that just happened. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're going to add the rest of the foliage kind of after we are done with our, um, after we're done with our flowers then we can come back and kind of add details on all of the leaves so first you just want to get down a layer of this greenery i'm going to add a little bit more coming over here i'm going to rinse out my brush so let me know when you guys all have um that portion done and I can show you the techniques that we're going to be using for our um, other colors for our purple and pink and if you're done with that um, and you don't have those colors make sure to make them real quick purple you can make with your blue and red and pink you can make with your white and red with a tad bit of purple or like a tinsy bit of blue but you are going to want to pre-mix those colors.
can't get the pointy leaves. Um, pointy leaves. It does take a little bit of practice. Um, you can always come back in and do them like with a, um, like with a smaller brush. Um, but I tend to do it with a one brush. And something that you want to be conscious about is your water to paint ratio. So if you don't have enough paint or you don't have enough water, um, it might be really hard to get that point. So try try using either a little bit more uh, water or a little bit more paint. Okay, so I'm just mixing together the colors of paint that I want. I have my purple and my pink, but they are very, very dark. So I'm just lightening them up um, with white. Depending on what colors you have, you may not need to do this. Um, but yeah. I'm going to practice these leaves on a blank page for a while before putting them on my painting. It's a little tricky. It is a little tricky. Um, if you want to just paint them on um, with like a smaller brush you can, but I find it really, really useful to know how to do it with, um, with one brush stroke. Um, so finding the key, the key is to find the consistency between um, the paint and water ratio. So you want it you want it like a creamy consistency. Okay, let me know when you guys are done with that section and you have your paint ready cuz then we get to get into uh using our palette knife for the uh flowers. And um, just while we're waiting, if you guys have liked this class, uh, make sure to give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe for uh, future classes, as well as I have a Patreon if you want more um, specialized classes um, and exclusive content. And then I have a Facebook. Um, that is primarily, I also have an Instagram, um, but my Facebook is primarily where I... Um, I will post events and other things that are going on. I'll post polls in the art artist community. Um, that's actually how we came up with the unicorn, um, with the unicorn moon painting. Um, the one, if you weren't here for the beginning, um, this is what we're doing next month. Um, we're doing a unicorn with like a moon and a, um, a really pretty back background. So um, definitely go over to Facebook, make sure to like, and then um, you'll get notifications whenever I post new events and things like that. Um, that will all go live on YouTube. Um, what colors do your colors look like? These are my colors. But again, do not be limiting yourself to what I can make because I, I probably have different colors than you to start off with. Um, but these are the two colors that I have. They did not start off like this. These were, um, they were very dark before I added white to them. Um, and these are going to mix together as we put them on our canvas. So think more of these are my darks and my shadow colors. And these are my light colors. Um, the unicorn one is... On the 22nd of February I believe so it's not the next one the next one that I'm doing is on the 8th of February and it is the bear Valentine like it's like a little gray bear holding some roses it's like our Valentine one um, and then the, the unicorn will be the one after that if you go to my channel um, I have a playlist of uh, just on my my bear like 
spare channel, um, just the front, there's a playlist of my live classes that are coming up. So you can set a reminder for that. Um, love the palette. I'll be getting one of those. Uh, yeah, I have links in the description of all the, um, recommendations that I have. I think this is in there. I have two sizes that I use. Uh, this is the larger one. It's really nice for using, um, palette knives. Let's be real. Either whenever I use palette knives, um, or Q-tips is the other one that I really like using it for. Um, okay. Is that helpful? Is everybody ready? Okay. I'm seeing a couple readies. All right. Let's go ahead and get to it. Okay. So if you do not have a palette knife, I would suggest using a butter knife for this and just use the back end, not the grated part, but the back end of the, like, the rounded part. So I would use that if you don't have a palette knife or if you can cut a credit card into kind of a round, um, sorry, I'm not showing here. Let me move this a little bit. Um, you want to have this round part, okay? This round part is what is going to make those round um, petals, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first, I'm going to make this go in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. I'm going to start top down, okay? So when you're doing this, you want to start at the back end and then work your way down. So more often than not, that means starting with the lighter color and then slowly working your way down into the darker color. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to grab, oops, sorry, I just moved the camera. I'm going to grab a tiny bit of white and a little bit of my pink. And I'm going to grab a good portion of this. And I'm going to start, let's see, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to start grabbing my purple. And I'm pulling down. So I'm grabbing it just on the tip, on the very tip. So before, before, let's see, where is it? Before we were using the edge of it, now we're using the tip, okay? So I've got it on just the tip of this, grabbing some paint, and I'm just using that tip and I'm placing it down, creating a little petal. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going, every time I put it down, for the most part, I'm going back in for more. So this is what it looks like. And then you can kind of taper it. It looks really blue there, but I promise it's purple. It's because it's reflecting off the... Um, reflecting off the light. And you're just going to keep doing that. And they can be these different colors. They can be the, the lighter pinks, the darker pinks, they can go into the purple. This is probably the most relaxing part of this class because it is just so fun. If the leaves are still wet, should I paint the, um, 
Should I paint the flowers? Um, if the leaves are still wet, you can wait. Um, but honestly, there's so much paint that you're putting on. Like, this paint is so thick. Um, that you really don't need to wait. Um, in all honesty. And then you're just going to put them wherever you want. If you want them a little bit um, sporadic. And try to think of where your light source is coming from. So um, if your light source is coming kind of, well, we put, we put a, um, a shadow on the right side. So let's say that the light source is coming from the top left corner. Everything on the top left corner um, is going to be on the lighter side. So maybe I'll put a couple more light ones over here. And you're just going to put them wherever you want. You can make them short and fat, you can make them long and skinny. You get to shape these. And try to leave try to leave some space to put some other leaves in here. And you're just going to keep doing that until you're all done with all of the flowers. Try not to be perfect, you know, just let the flowers um, create themselves and sometimes we get too focused on one specific part of a painting that we forget that as a whole it looks good. You know, um, I'm also going to put a little bit of this down here on the bottom. Maybe there's some over here poking through. So you'll notice I turned my um, I turned my palette knife upside down, and now I'm going the opposite way. I'm starting again. I'm starting at the tip of this. I'm working my way up.
How do we make a flower droop down? Um, so I went the other direction. So instead of starting at the top and working our way down, I still started at the top of the flower, but it's drooping down. So for instance, this one, I started at the top of the flower, but it's actually the bottom. Um, and I turned my paintbrush over. Or sorry, not my paintbrush, my, um, my palette knife. So I started at the top and worked my way up. I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to use a little bit more pink because it's starting to get a little dark. Um, did you take the white first or the pink first? Which one is at the tip? So I kind of mixed a little bit of the white into the pink so that the pink um, was a little bit lighter. Um, but that's also because I have a dark pink. So if you have a light pink, um, you can just start with your pink, your whitish pink at the tip. Um, but it all depends on where your light source is. So remember, my light source is coming from the, you know, the top left. So, and it wouldn't make sense for me to have pink and light colors for the, for the flowers that are underneath these leaves or that should be in the, um, the shade, okay? So I'm going to add just a little bit more of like highlights. So I can add a little bit of these light colored pinks to like the tip. like so and that is that is what it looks like I'm gonna come back in here with a little bit more purple a little bit too a little bit too light for me that is the end of this we do have to move on because um, there's still a few more steps and it's already six o'clock um, so I'm going to show you real quick um, you'll want to get um, for the the leaves or for the petals that are on the bottom of here when petals and leaves um, when they dry up they get lighter so that's why most of these petals on the table are light. Um, so I'm just gonna mix together that color real quick, which is just a little bit of my white and a little bit of my pink color. And I'm kind of letting this dry just a little bit. It's not gonna dry too much, but And just kind of in that same kind of messy style, um, I'm going to use my my palette knife to put a few of these petals. Just in the same kind of way, I'm just not clustering them together, I'm not clustering them all together. And some are next to each other, um, some are further away, so don't, don't cluster them all. Maybe there's more right next to the pot, but... I'm sorry for the amount of wind that is going on outside my window right now.
Remember, I'm just using the tip of my brush. You can add some purple ones in there too, that's fine. Maybe the ones that are in the shadow might be a little bit more purple. take the white f wait do you take oh I already yeah I already asked that one wait do you take the white first or the pink first which one is on the oh, yeah I already answered that okay just making sure not missing questions but yeah that's how you do that and then the last thing that we're gonna do just real quick before we finish up class we are going to add the lighter leaves so go ahead and grab um, whatever brush you feel more, most comfortable with, but I'm going to grab the, um, the Filbert brush. The, I'm going to do the medium sized Filbert brush. So I'm going to take, uh, let's see, a green color. Let's see. Whoa. I have to make this green color again because mine dried out and I don't have any left. Oops. That was a lot of blue. YOLO. Okay. And then, so for this color that we're going to be putting on our green is, um, sorry, that we're going to be putting on our palette knife for the, sorry, we're not using the palette knife for, for the brush, for the pot. There we go. Let me slow down my wording. For the pot, for the light colored leaves, it's going to be our normal green. So whatever yellow and green that you had. But we're adding white. So it's just kind of a washed out lighter color. Yes, don't forget the bricks. Thank you. We it's um honestly I think it's because we did the we did the um the leaves out of order. Because we were supposed to do a layer of leaves and then leaves and then brick and then the last layer of leaves. But we kind of skipped that part, didn't we? Um, thank you for reminding me. I like this green. Let me see. I think it might be too blue. Oh, having a hard time getting the color right. There we go. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put in some of these leaves. Try to remember where your light source is coming from. So I'm going to finish up these, um, these leaves and then we'll do the bricks and then we'll be done. Thank you for reminding me. I would have forgotten. And 
you're just going to add some of these light colors in here. And it's okay if it mixes in with the purple a little bit. Like, that's okay. I'm gonna have this other blue color in here because I felt like it. You can always come back over with a little bit of this purple or pink color if you need to, if you feel like you need to fix something or fill in or whatever. Um, that's what I'm doing. Um, yeah, if you have time, then you could definitely, um, you could definitely wait before adding the lighter leaves if you wanted to. Um, but I tend to like to do it while it's wet so that if I need to like fix anything, um, the purple is still wet for me to do that versus if it dries and I can't really, it's harder to fix. So it's totally up to you. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do, thank you for the reminder. We're going to go ahead and do the bricks. So you can always come back to the flowers. Um, but we're going to, um, we're going to get a flat brush, whatever flat brush you have. You can use the angle brush that we already used. You can use a lighter brush if you'd like to. Um, sorry, not a lighter brush, a bigger brush. Um, you're going to get the, kind of the green colors that we've already been using. And guys, this is, this is literally the easiest thing. You're just going to draw little lines all the way across and you can have them in like your different colors of you know of greens and blacks you can try to be consistent kind of get darker as you go up yeah this was a step that was supposed to be done earlier but that's okay And then just like bricks, and then just like bricks, uh, yes, I can zoom out. Oh, I apologize. I didn't realize I was, um, there you go. So I started with the kind of the lighter green, because that's probably in the sun. You can even probably add like a tiny bit of white to it. Um, and then every other one you're going to do a little a little dab and then on the on the opposite ones you're going to do it in the middle of those And then if you wanted to add like texture or anything, you could always do that on a few of them. Can't see the bricks. Can you see the bricks now?
very final step, you, if you wanted to add a little bit more, um, if you wanted to add more greenery to your, um, your pot, you can take a, either a liner brush or you can use um, the brush that you're using, the flat one, and you can add a couple twigs of, um, I don't know, green or you could do it in brown if you wanted to. They could be le like really long leaves or something extra. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm sure it's super late where a lot of you are. Don't forget to sign it in the corner. I usually will sign it in whatever corner doesn't take away from the painting as a whole. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it in the, uh, the right corner. If you'd like to post your um, your beautiful painting and let me see it, um, make sure to join my artist community. It's just Facebook slash groups slash uh, Samantha Anderson artist. It's also, um, I think I also posted it in the description of this uh, video as well as it's on my Facebook. But thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you'd like to give a tip, you can, but it's totally optional. Uh, it does help fund these um, in order to be free, but again, it's optional. I do have a Patreon and everything else that we've been talking about, but thank you so much for class. Thank you for being here. Um, this will remain online for as long as you need it to be, and um, yeah, we'll see you in a couple weeks for our Valentine painting. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Bye.